Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the book that I read in January. I have to say that I started the year in a book slump because if you've seen this video, you know that I tried to read Iron Flame, which is the sequel to Fort Wing, if you don't know, and I didn't like it. I got to 60% and... I felt like I, w I was literally forcing myself to read it. I know that reading is subjective, so maybe you liked it and that's the purpose of the book. So I'm really, really happy to, if you did, but it really didn't do it for me. And I didn't want to force myself to read it and just spend the entire month trying to read one book. So I decided to pick up other books, other genre. I have new five star books for the month. So it was a great month. It was a great start to the year. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the first book that I've read on my Kindle, which was Never Lie by Frida McFerrin. The name rings a bell. It's probably because of the book House made which is going to be on my tbr for february because my mom is reading it and if you've seen my other video you know that we have our little very 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 little book club you're welcome to join if you want to she's reading that for the time being and i read never lie and it literally got me out of my book slump never lie is a psychological thriller i chose it because it was short. It was not a romance or a fantasy. It was something that was fast paced and that's literally what I needed. We are following a newlywed couple who are visiting houses and they are actually visiting one house that belongs to a psychiatrist, a psych, a psycholog? I, uh, the house used to belong to a renowned psychiatrist. That specific woman disappeared a few years ago and they have never found who killed her if she's dead at all. They visit during a snowstorm they get stuck into without their agent and they decide to spend the night there. They discover things along the way and one thing that I really loved about this book, throughout most of the book I was like, mm, I, I know what's going to happen. I mean, it's good. I love the book. I love the pace, but I definitely know what's going to happen. And then I really didn't see it coming. I was literally blown away by that turn of event. That book, I give it five star. It was really, really good. Very good to get out of a book slump if you're looking for something that isn't a romance or a fantasy. That was the first book that I've read in January. In January, I also got back onto reading physical books. I have been reading on my Kindle for most of 2023 and I felt like maybe that was going to help me get out of a book slump. So I grabbed a copy of The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This was very good. I have to say I preferred Never Lie to this one, but it was very good. So this is a murder mystery horror book. We are following a, the caregiver who for some reason that I'm not going to spoil in this video has to take a job and take care of a woman that is accused of killing her entire family when she was in her teens so she has to go and take care of her it's the only job that she can have so she takes it but she kind of is afraid of going afraid of that woman that woman she cannot talk anymore she cannot move anymore so it's written as in we have the point of view of the tech caregiver but also some part of it are the actual the woman who is supposed to be the killer who writes down on the typewriter and give us a glimpse of what happened throughout the book. So that was very good. I really enjoyed that book. I enjoyed reading back onto a physical copy, but I also read on my Kindle and the physical book because at night I'm getting old. My eyes need bigger font because this was small. I didn't remember how small font could be in a physical book, but um, yeah, I love, love, love this. The one thing that I would say is that I feel like the author tried to give so many twists at the end and it felt a little bit overwhelming, but I think that the last 10-ish page just like made me fall back in love with that book. It all wraps it up together and I really, really loved the ending of that book. So even though I saw some twists coming, it was a great read and I gave this four star. I discovered a world through Stephanie Garber, Once Upon a Broken Heart. I don't know why I didn't read this before, but oh my God, did I love this. I'm currently reading the second book of this trilogy. It's very, very good. I haven't read Carval and I know that a lot of people say that you need to read Carval before reading this one and I wasn't aware of that before being at the middle of this book 
So I'd say that you don't have to read Caraval, but I understand that if you want to understand the world better, it would be a great idea. But otherwise, I didn't have any trouble understanding the world. In Once Upon a Broken Art, we are following Evangeline Wu lost her lover and prayed to uh, fate for her lover to get back to her but then she is turned into a statue and then so many things happen to her and she moves to the magnificent north and that is where the magic happened she is on a mission to find her happy ever after and obviously things don't turn out as they should so there is that enemy to lover i feel like romance in there i love jack the other character which is the main male uh, character in that series and yeah i really get attached to these characters so i would highly suggest this and i have to say i love the world that stephanie garbert created for that Siri, it's so magical and the way she writes thing i i really really love it i love her writing styles the way she structures some sentences let me see because i need to give you an example okay so here uh, an example of what i'm saying is she writes happy endings can be cut but they are difficult to hold on to they are dreams that want to ex escape the night they are treasures with wings they are wild and feral or there is also this one he slid through the icy night like a slow falling star it's just how she creates these images i i feel it in my heart and in my mind when i read her book and i love it so much i gave this five star it was an easy rating for me i really really love her books and i'm so happy that i have book number two and book number three to read in that series so i will definitely be keep on reading them in february and give you my overall rating of that series probably in february because i go through this like it's my main job you know this this book i loved it so so much if you're looking for a fantasy romance that isn't hard to follow that doesn't contain spice uh in the first book anyway um the banter are really really cool i love this very much i would highly highly recommend i used to listen to audiobook mostly for self-help self-care books self-improvement or stuff like that but this month i decided to try the inheritance game by jennifer lynn barnes it's a young adult mystery thriller it's a lot of clues you feel like you're actually trying to find the answer to all of the clues that they have while you listen well in my case i listen to the book i love the way that when i listen to the book there is actually this texan accent that give me a second i'll be back as always it wouldn't be a video if my dog didn't do an appearance so everybody hi i'm kelso yay okay yeah it really made a difference for me that i could hear that accent uh, while listening to the audiobook and it really wasn't too hard to follow as an audiobook as well so i would highly suggest you that to try it in audiobook if you haven't read the book yet we actually follow an high school girl who unexpectedly received a letter saying that she inherits billions of dollars from that mysterious person and she is brought into that world of people who have too much money and she's wondering why she's receiving that money and she has to live with the four boys that live there as well as some member of the family and obviously she doesn't trust all of them because I, she knows that they want the money that she had because they didn't get as much money as she did yeah it's a very fun book to listen to i really enjoyed it that is it you guys these are the books that i've read in the month of january i wouldn't count stephanie garber's second book of the once upon a broken heart series just because i haven't finished it yet i still have 30 percent to read probably going to finish it in the month of january because i'm filming this a little bit ahead of time but yeah, if you have any suggestion for me for the month of February, I would love to hear that. What was your favorite book in January? I'm always on a hunt for a very good book. If you like these kind of video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports myself as a content creator and my channel. And also if you're new, welcome. I would love for you guys to subscribe to follow me along into that YouTube journey. I post new video every single week. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.